Snowtracks Television, going strong for 25 years. Snowtracks is sponsored by Skidoo Snowmobiles. Experience that Skidoo feeling. Yamaha, conquer snow. And by FXR Racing, maximum versatility for all conditions. 2019 was a big year for Polaris with the release of their new Indy XC platform and Pro CC rear skid frame. Of course, the 850 Patriot was the talk of the industry as well. It's inevitable though, once you release a new product, there will be a horde of people asking, why didn't you release this? Or I would buy one if you offered this. So to assume the Indy XC 129 would remain unchanged for 2020 would be pretty naive. So what's new? Well, a few things. First and most obviously is a new Indy XC 137, which is basically just a longer version of the Pro CC skid frame found in the Indy 129, made into an Indy XC chassis with a longer tunnel. Yeah, we, we launched our Indy 129 in model year 19, and we heard from our customers, uh, you know, as we got that out in market and just looking at how people are using the sleds, they love that they love that platform, but they want it a little bit longer track. Uh, a lot of our customers like to get off the trail and play a little bit. They also like how the longer tracks bridge the bumps on the trail and, and the ride quality that comes with that longer track and, and the traction. An Indy XC 129 based XCR is also coming next season and it boasts all the awesome upgrades of the previous XCR models, but in the more traditional Indy XC configuration. The most impressive upgrade you get when you move to the XCR version of the Indy XC is an all new shock package from Walker Evans. You know, Walker Evans is a great partner for Polaris, um, industry leading technology across the board and lots of our different Walker Evans packages. but. What we're really doing at this point is we're really expanding on what we've learned in snowcross and hill climb racing with the velocity package. So as we launched our Indy 137, we're bringing velocity and needle technology into that platform. And on XCR, we're bringing the velocity packages um, much like what they're racing on the snowcross track and on the hill climb circuit. So it brings position sensing shock damping to consumer sleds that are directly coming out of the race program. Just really cool industry leading technology. I know we do a lot of talking about Fox shocks, but the truth is these Walker Velocity shocks may just be better than even the best OE supplied Fox dampers. As exciting as the new XC137 and XCR129 models are, there's something else new from Polaris that's targeted at mountain riders. So for model year 20 in RMK lineup, we have RMK Chaos that we're bringing to market. We're calling this the first, industry's first all mountain sled. And we're thinking about uh, the, the customers that wanted a more dynamic sled, uh, not quite as focused on tree riding and technical terrain and more focused on uh, a little bit of everything, whether it's single track or playing in the meadows or up pulling the tree lines, uh, a little bit more dynamic, uh, most flickable sled in the industry. When we started on Chaos RMK, what we really focused on was rebalancing the sled to make it a little bit lighter on the front end to carry a little bit more weight on the rear suspension. So we changed the geometry of the rail beams and we changed the, the travel of the front arm to, to rebalance the sled and shift some of the weight off the front into the rear. And what that does is it, it makes the front light and a, a little bit uh, less weight on the skis that lets it initiate a turn easier, um, just really, really effortless and, and dynamic ride. Along with that, a new shock package that carries the weight a little bit differently also and has uh, ultimate ride and control in the big bumps in the single track. When I first took the Chaos for a ride, I hadn't ridden the Pro RMK for quite a while and I was pretty skeptical about just how different they could possibly be. Then one of the Polaris engineers switched sleds with me and the second I took off on the Pro RMK, it was so obvious they are nothing alike. Now, this is not to say the chaos couldn't be ridden in the trees or where it's really steep. It just wouldn't be as easy to ride there as if you were on a pro. But when you're on the lower slopes in open valleys or meadows, the chaos is worlds easier 
and more fun to ride than the Pro. So they're different, but neither is overall better than the other. For 2020, Polaris hasn't really introduced any new chassis or any new technology. What they have done is given consumers exactly what they're asking for in the form of the Indy XC137, and they've massaged one of their most popular models to meet the needs and wants of different types of mountain riders with the all-new Chaos. Skidoo kind of blew our minds at this year's sneak peek new product intro with this information. They told us sales of the performance utility segment actually rival sales of their own wildly popular MXZ product line. Does this info mess up your mind? Think about this. This segment, Performance Utility, has grown 10% a year for the last five years. Strangely, this goes on with little fanfare. In fact, the sale of these extreme performance utility snowmobiles have been mostly below the radar in places where recreational snowmobiling isn't all that popular. Far northern Quebec, Northern Ontario and the Canadian province of Newfoundland consumes these powerful, big footprint rides like ice cream on a hot day. Here's a weird thought. What if riding one of these high-performance 20-inch by 154 wide-track sleds required little or even no compromise? Let's look at the players in this segment. Polaris came to the party just a year ago with the all-new Titan wide-track, powered by a full-on 800 Liberty clean fire. The Titan caught on and took Polaris to a new segment they hadn't occupied. We think the Titan may have tweaked the segment simply by its presence. The Titan is a rocket and a legitimate trail sled for the masses. However, it can tow an ice fish hut as easily as it can navigate acres of bottomless snow. With Polaris arriving in a segment Skidoo has dominated for years with their 800 E-Tech Expedition Extreme, you can be sure that Skidoo's response would be quick to the market. And here it is, the all-new G4 Expedition. The Expedition series is now built on the G4 wide-body platform with a 20-inch tunnel. Here's the good news. You can choose between 600 and 850 two-stroke power or 900 turbo or non-turbo four-stroke power. The 850 E-Tech is exclusive to the Expedition Extreme and comes with a 1.8-inch lug track. The Expedition SE is the 20-inch equivalent in every comparable way to the legendary Grand Touring SE, including full-on air ride suspension. The LE version is the standard model, yet SE and LE Expeditions both come with a removable passenger seat and your choice of three engines. Skidoo told us one of the main barriers keeping 20-inch wide sleds from going to the mainstream is their predisposition to generate thunderous track rumble, crazy track howl, and unrepentant track vibration. So guess what? Skidoo developed three new tracks they call Silent Cobra WT. By cutting slots in the track carcass between every grouser and adding soft vibration absorbing rubber under every wheel, the new expeditions are truly quiet and smooth. Whether you choose the 1.5 Silent Cobra WT, the 1.5 Silent Ice Cobra, or the 1.8 inch Silent Cobra WT, you'll experience no more track resonance than a 15 inch wide trail sled. This bit of engineering, in our opinion, is destined to expand the Expedition lineup's appeal to a much wider, recreational, groom trail audience. Another improvement to the appeal of the new G4 Expedition compared to the original Lynx built Expedition is the move to a vastly improved, shift on the fly, high low range transmission. Skidoo already has 100 Link accessories for the Expedition line, including ice auger mounts a chainsaw mount, and gun scabbards. The Expedition LE could be the best choice for those wanting wide track versatility, but have specific applications for the sled. The Expedition SE is definitely skewed to big cargo, long distance two for touring, while the Expedition Extreme is clearly the sport oriented crossover ride. All Expedition power packages come with a front mounted, fan assisted radiator for heavy, low speed hauling. Call these all new expeditions, ultimate crossovers, or hardcore utility snowmobiles. It doesn't matter. 
The level of performance and features here will boggle your sensibilities. You really need to ride one of these sleds. Inevitable comparisons will come once we get a Titan XC800 and an Expedition Extreme 850 E-Tech together on the snow. Sure, it'll be fun to see which one is the most capable in deep, off-trail snow. However, we want to line them up on Kevlar Lake and see which 20-incher is the fastest. When the snow dust settles, these 20-inch wide long tracks are signaling a shift in the sport we may not have seen coming. Here's the new reality. Snowmobilers want snowmobiles that can do more than just one thing. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. The 2020 model year will see some interesting changes for the Yamaha brand, including the introduction of new models, as well as an all new GT package, and even the intro of a 600cc two-stroke utility crossover sled. Right up front, yeah, I did just say a two-stroke utility crossover sled. The transporter features the SeaTech 2 600 DSI power plant and sends power to the 153 by 15 inch wide articulating skid. It'll feature the PowerClaw 2.25 lug track. This sled not only is a huge departure from the lack of a new two-stroke model to the Yamaha line for, well, it's been about a decade, but it also allows them to break into new markets with a lightweight, long track, light utility crossover sled. No doubt Yamaha was getting requests from its dealer base for a light, standard 15-inch wide utility crossover sled. Both of these things are something that the VK540 is not, and it'd also be something that would be hard to match with a four-stroke in terms of weight. Another change in the lineup for 2020 is the XTX, Yamaha's off-trail sidewinder. For next season, gone is the coilover rear shock, as well as the 141 inch length. And in exchange, a torsion spring rear setup has been adopted, as well as a new 146 inch length. The new rear skid should deliver a more plush rear arm ride, even with the increased track length over the current 141. The XTX will be offered in an LE package with a heated seat and a 1.6 inch track and QS3 Fox shocks, as well as the SE version with a 2.25 Camso peak track, QS3 shocks, the 40-inch narrower ski stance, and Yamaha mountain skis. Another pretty sizable change comes to the SR Viper, a sled that hasn't been changed for quite a few years, but this year gets a seriously big overhaul. While you may have expected the Viper to get the Sidewinder bodywork, it didn't for this season. Yamaha went with something completely new called Gen 2. And while it does look Sidewinder-ish, it's totally different design. There's also a new LED headlight resembling the Bigger Brother Turbo, while the Viper also sees new front-end geometry through the use of new front suspension components to deliver a better ride and more precise handling. Other notables are the return of the 146-inch STX Sidewinder as well as multiple two-up options for the 2020 model year. Two-up options include the Venture in a 151-inch version with all the bells and whistles for touring, plus the addition of power steering. Adding to the two-up line is a new STX GT Sidewinder that features overload springs and an auxiliary gas tank. There will also be a new package available on many Yamaha models labeled the GT and offered on both Viper and Sidewinder that feature QS3 Fox shocks, 1.25 ripsaw tracks, heated seats, taller windshields, RCA heated visor outlets in both tunnel and goggle bags. Yamaha's lineup for 2019 did seem just a little bit skinny, but for 2020, they're ramping back up with way more models in their lineup, offering greater features and better value.
closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. Skidoo has tons of sizzle moving into model year 2019. However, among the biggest news is the arrival of the all new 600R engine, purpose built to slide into the revolutionary G4 chassis. No matter how you look at the Snowmo biz and the percentage of sales per OEM, when the numbers are tallied, the 600cc engine segment, including trail, crossover, touring, utility, and deep snow, is still the most popular engine of choice. Skidoo has built a huge number of Series 3 600 semi-direct injected and then E-Tech direct injected engines since 2004. The Series 3 engine was durable, in fact, among the most durable engines Rotax has ever produced. However, as time marched on, two realities became apparent. First, the Series 3 engine was getting long in the tooth, no longer leading in 600 class performance. And secondly, there was no way the Series 3 motor was going to fit in the G4 chassis. Skidoo's product plan since the early 00s has been to install as many different displacement motors as possible into as few chassis variants as practical. The archetypical Skidoo snowmobile is defined by motor and track variations using the same bulkhead and basic bodywork. This is smart from just about every perspective, including controlling costs, preserving profitability, and simplifying manufacturing. Knowing these realities, when we saw the G4850, our first question for Skidoo was, when are you gonna put a 600 in it? The new G4 chassis is so radically different from the former XS and XP platform as a result of Skidoo's move to center weight both front to rear and side to side as well. The new 850 G4 engine is very narrow in the cases using a never seen before compact flat stator required to shoehorn the engine into the sled's bulkhead. On top of the physical size restrictions of the all new G4 chassis, there was still the need for Skidoo to one-up their 600-class competitors with improved performance from a new 600 engine. The new 600R power plant succeeds in both categories, presenting a very narrow profile with an internal starter ring gear and rationalized physical dimensions. The new motor also sends the competition back to the drawing board to look for more power. While Skidoo only claims about a 5-horsepower improvement over the Series 3 engine, Throttle response at the engine speeds you use most when riding trails is up a substantial 30%. The rev chassis in the 600R MXZX is virtually identical to the now familiar G4850 in all its variants, including the Renegade. Just for the record, there are no G4s with 120-inch tracks. The G4 platform carries a full-on R-Motion skid, and for the record, this is the best ride in the biz with the exception of the new Pro CC from Polaris, which now appears worthy of similar praise. Up front, there's Skidoo's RAS AA Arm IFS designed specifically for the far, far forward rider orientation the G4 demands. While ride quality from the RAS setup is good, we still feel handling is somewhat twitchy. Skidoo crows a lot about the G4's ergonomics, and while we're okay with this flat top seat, we do think this adjustable bar riser should be standard on every G4 variant. For us, it's a non-negotiable. The G4 chassis uses a first ever for Skidoo cast aluminum bulkhead. The move to this stiffer design replacing the XS XP riveted aluminum bulkhead is welcome. The old design was vulnerable to bending while the new cast piece is anvil tough. The G4's tunnel is unique in the industry right now, built from two sandwiched aluminum pieces to form a fully integrated heat exchanger without the use of extruded coolers. It's a slick innovation. How does she go? Skidoo clearly delivered the goods with the new 600R engine. No Skidoo 600 owner will mistake the improvement in power from engagement to full whack. It's fast. Those faithful Skidoo owners who've been drooling for the G4 600 will find the new chassis both familiar and different at the same time. Handling is even more precise and a little edgy with the G4 and the rider's perch will feel further forward than on any previous rev. This sensation of being on top of the spindles requires some adjustment. This is why we feel the adjustable handlebar riser is important. You can get yourself seated more comfortably with less adjustment time by trying both forward and rearward riser positions. When equipped with a decent windshield, the new leaner bodywork is every bit as warm as the former XS. 
One area we're not convinced is as warm are these open footrests. Skidoo has moved the bar in the 600 class with the intro of the new G4 Rev 600R. We are impressed again by Skidoo's voracious dedication to producing the best quality sleds in the industry while innovating new ideas which continue to position the brand as the leader in the snowmo biz. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles, MDRP Power Sports, race inspired, trail proven, and by the wide world of Arctic Hat. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.